Public spaces are at the essence of urban life. It's in public spaces that human encounters occur and produce what we call the art of city life. Urban life is currently undergoing a transformation in cities worldwide. Urban streets and public spaces are regaining their vitality. From a visit to Seoul, I was most looking forward to seeing two urban regeneration projects. At the heart of the Seoul lies one of the world's greatest urban design projects, the Chen Yang Chong River Park. A great oasis in a concrete jungle, this inspiring urban renewal success underwent a dramatic transformation from a traffic trolled elevated freeway and a concrete paved waterway into a lush, 3.6 mile long, daily stream corridor that attracts over 60,000 visitors daily. Chen Yang Chong restoration work brought balance to the area south and north of the stream. During the modernization area, downtown Seoul was divided into two parts, north and south. Based on their features and function, the restoration helped to join this part to create a new urban structure, connecting the structural and environmental resources in northern and southern areas of the stream, resulting in a balanced and sustainable development of northern and southern areas in the Han River. The project speed up traffic around the city when the motorway was removed. So has implemented transportation planning, rerouting traffic through other corridors and adding more public transportation. As a result, there are 45% decrease in welcome volume, 15.1% increase in bus ridership, and 3.3% increase in subway ridership. It has been cited as a real-life example of various paradox. Over 75% of the material torn down from the old highway was reused to construct a park and rehabilitate the stream. A fish, bird, and insert have made their way back into the urban river, and the area surrounding the park is about 3.6 Celsius degree cooler than other part of the city. Moreover, the water is heavily treated so that visitors can play different activities in the stream. The restoration has also provided huge boost to local biodiversity and catalyzed economic development. With increased overall biodiversity by 639% between the pre-restoration work in 2003, and the end of 2008, with the number of the plant species increased from 62 to 308, fish uh, species from 4 to 25, bird species from 6 to 36, increases the, p the price of land by 30 to 50% of property within 50 meters of the restoration project. This is double the rate of property increase in other areas of Seoul. Another project is Solo 1717. The 17th in the name comes from the year 1970, when the flyover was dedicated. Well, the 17 is both the number of walkways connected to it and the year 2017. It is the transformation of inner city highway into a botanic bridge, redirecting traffic and redefining it as a public space. And it was built as a complement to Chen Yang Chong restoration project, but more garden than park. The bridge primary function is providing a much needed, needed pedestrian road, with a vast array of potted Korean plant species introduced to slow the movement of people along the kilometer lengths. Solo 1770 connects Nandaman Market with the city's Maori Dong, Zhongyun Dong, and Changpa Dong neighborhoods, swiping over the top of Seoul's main railway station, as well as several multi-line highways. By connecting these formerly fragmented areas, the project has regeneration impact beyond its elevated platform. 
whilst the central part of the bridge is exposed above sprawling expanse of railway tracks and lines of traffic towards each, and it becomes absorbed within high-rise towers, with the new walkways, bridges, elevators, and escalators connecting the road directly with the neighboring hotels, shops, and gardens. This connection maintains the bridge as a relative uninterrupted and uncommercialized space. While well, well, supporting it with the sub-layer of activity and attraction, the bridge hosts 50 families of plants, including trees, shrubs, and flowers, growing in 645 cylindrical concrete pots. Some plants create a veneer of controlled nature over the strictly urban condition below, subdivided into several smaller gardens, which have individual identities and change with the seasons. Both projects are instrumental in Seoul's continued effort to shift from car to foot, shows a strong dedication from government aimed to prioritize quality of life in urban planning, and gave a certain answer to the controversial debate in urban planning between those who emphasize the vehicle-oriented city and those who believe the city should be more pedestrian-friendly. From my observation, everyone enjoyed these places today, include families and playing children, young couples on dates, all staff having after-work drinks, elderly picnickers, and street musicians.